Hey guys, Wilk here. So we're right in the middle of recording our detailed review of Gran Turismo 7 at the moment. We're just switching between Tom driving and me driving. So I'm jumping into, I guess you could call the driver's seat for the very first time in Gran Turismo 7. Now we thought this was a good opportunity to do a bit of a comparison between the DualSense controller for PS5 and a full-blown sim rig setup like what I have beside me here. So this is the Fnatic GT DD Pro. We also do have the load cell pedal on there too. And we're running this on a Next Level Racing FGT Elite cockpit. So the aim of this quick video today is to do some laps with the DualSense controller, then jump into the sim rig and see what some of the differences are. So obviously we'll compare different lap times, but also just the general experience too, whether the experience is way more immersive with a steering wheel or whether a DualSense controller does just fine. Now, from what I understand, and I haven't spent a whole lot of time with the PS5 yet in general. This has all kinds of haptic feedback things going on, vibration motors, force feedback in the in the little paddles themselves. And a lot of people have been raving about these controllers in general. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how that translates across in the context of sim racing. So let's jump straight in and get started. We're gonna be running around high speed ring to begin with, and we might move across to a more technical track a little bit later on, depending on how things are going. We're gonna be running probably the most famous Gran Turismo car in history, the Supra GT500, or as you might know it, the uh, Tom Supra. And yeah, let's jump in and see what happens. I've got no idea what to expect here, but we're gonna give it a shot and see what happens. So we hit start. All right. So I've got to remember to change gear as well. Now, what, the first thing I'm noticing here straight away is, it's interesting how they've adapted the animation of the steering wheel. So you can see that when I'm, when I'm going from full left to full right, the steering doesn't just jump straight across immediately, which is really cool. So it is relatively smooth here, although a lot more choppy, obviously, than what we're used to from a steering wheel. And that's just due to the scale of the inputs, but able to get through turn one at full speed. It's been a very long time since I've driven around high speed ring. Get her turned in, back on the power. Come on, run it out wide, try and open out the steering as quickly as we can. Not compromise our exit speed. Get back on the power. So getting used to it, it, it is quite smooth. <laughs> Listen to that turbo flutter, how good is that? Love this car. Hear the turbo screaming through the tunnel as well. Now, one shift down is probably enough here. Back on the power. All right, how did we go? One minute, 13.3 for our first lap. I reckon three laps will probably be enough, maybe five. We'll see how we go, see how consistent we are. But you do you do get a good sense of the, the texture of the track through the controller. You do, you, you feel the movement of the car. It's amazing how much it actually does translate for just being a hand controller. Whoop, didn't quite carry enough speed there. Gonna be slower than my first lap. <laughs> Go, all right. Half a second slower. See if we can carry a bit more speed through mid corner here. Back on the power. Come on. Probably don't need to use quite that much track there. Carry more speed. I realized on lap one that I wasn't carrying enough speed there. Here we go, he's right on my tail. Oh, I'm right on my tail. <laughs> How did we go? 113.1. Let's see if we can crack the 113. Nice and wide, get it turned in. Hold the power flat. A little bit more steering angle, just trying to minimize the amount of steering that I'm putting in. Keep the steering as open as possible. Back on the power, run it right up against the wall, starting to get the hang of it now. A little bit more brakes. 
Roll it through. Right up against the wall. Now the aim here isn't to be the fastest person in the world. I'm well aware that there's gonna be a lot of people with controllers that are a lot quicker than me. What I'm trying to, I guess, convey here is just the experience overall. So lap time is a, is a part of that, but also just the immersion that we're getting as a new person coming into the game for the very first time, what the experience is like between a controller and using a wheel, and whether it's something that you're, you're likely to want to just invest in a wheel straight away to get that maximum experience. Okay, so that was a 112.2. Let's do a couple more laps here, simply because that was so much faster. I'm definitely leaving. I reckon I could probably go about five seconds faster than this if I really got on it. Better. Oh, a little tap on the wall there. Compromised us a bit. Back on the power. All right, we'll do one more lap, I think. That'll give us five laps in total. Keep it pinned, come on, come on. Open up the steering. Just in front, okay, one more lap. 112.1, let's see if we can get into 111s. That was better. How good is that engine sound though? <laughs> Love it. Oh, a little bit greedy there on my entry. Now I'm gonna have to go through the same learning curve as well with the uh, with the wheel. Quite a bit faster again, this is definitely going to be a 111. Might do, I'll do one more lap simply because I am still gaining quite a bit of time here. Let's see what we can do. But no, I'm feeling a surprising amount of feedback through the controller. I mean, obviously it's not the same as using a steering wheel. You're not getting that genuine force feedback, but particularly under brakes. Oops. Oh no, we made it. Ah, oh, slow exit though. Nice and smooth. No, I don't think I'm going to beat myself. <laughs> Keep it pinned. Get a good run. There we go. All right, so wind it down now. So we did, what did we do with 113.3, 113.17, a 112.2, 112.1, and then a 111.4 and a 111.7. So we were consistently getting faster and faster there. Track familiarity isn't gonna be a thing here at all. I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of laps around high speed ring, although not for about 15 years now. I, uh, I haven't actually played uh, much GT5 or GT6, but I spent a lot of time playing GT4, GT3 and the originals as well. So yeah, look, I mean, I guess the controller, you are getting a surprising amount of feedback through there. You feel the little bumps in the track, you feel the ripples, you get quite a lot of communication through the, uh, through the active paddles on the back of the wheel too. Particularly the brake has a really nice, almost, I almost wanna say hydraulic feel to it. It really does 
do an amazing job of giving you that sensation of hydraulic pressure behind the paddle. Now, obviously, you don't have a uh, you don't have a threshold point like you do with a with a load cell or hydraulic brake, but that does actually feel surprisingly good. So, and I'm sure anybody that's run GT7 so far with the hand controller might be thinking about upgrading to a wheel. That's one thing that definitely does surprise me. So what we'll do now is we'll jump across into the sim rig, do exactly the same scenario again. I'll give myself six laps and let's see what kind of times we do by comparison. Okay, so very first time driving Gran Turismo 7 with the sim rig here. So again, we're running a Gran Turismo DD Pro from Fnatic as well as the default wheel. We've got the Fnatic CSL pedals here with the load cell upgrade too. So that is important. That gives us a lot more feeling and a lot more definition in the brake, a lot more ability to modulate around our threshold point. And what I mean by threshold point is when you push the pedal down, there's a clear spot where you kind of feel the force fighting against you. It's easy to break to that point consistently every single time and then modulate that pressure around. So it gives you a lot more feeling, at least in theory, than what we have with the trigger on the hand controller, even though that did feel impressively good, I must say. And we're running this on the Next Level Racing FGT Elite cockpit, which is nice and solid. There's no flex or movement anywhere on here. So everything that we're doing, everything we're feeling with our hands is all communicated through without any dampening effect introduced by any movement or slop inside the rig itself. So time to beat is a 1 11.466. I'm going to jump in now. I've got six laps to do it. But more interestingly here, really, or what we're really trying to pay attention to here is more, I guess, the consistency. And the reason why I chose this track and car combination again is it's a it's a track that I'm familiar with. So track familiarity isn't an issue at all. I know the track like the back of my hand. It's all just down to the inputs, the feeling of the game, and all those variables which are the same across both. So now is going to be a learning experience with the wheel. Let's get onto the track. All right, get a feeling for... Now we are running, I should also mention, we're running Fnatic's recommended settings here for the wheel too, because I haven't, obviously being my first time driving with it, I haven't had any opportunity to fine tune to my taste. So we're just running default as Fnatic recommends it on their forums. And I'll drop a link down in the description below for you guys if you are interested in seeing what those settings are. Pretty basic setting adjustments there, nothing too major. All right, let's get around here. So immediately I'm able to be a lot smoother with my inputs. That's the first thing that I'm noticing straight away. And there's no surprises there really at all. Keep it out of the wall, power back down. So what I was doing before with the controller was kind of just slamming the brake all the way to 100% and then modulating it a huge amount back to zero almost and then coasting through the mid corner whereas here I'm able to actually use some trail braking technique now absolutely you could learn to use trail braking technique with the hand controller as well so again I'm not sort of trying to say here that you couldn't be as fast with the hand controller I think you could be in this game just from the one lap that I've done already you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling the same level of detail in the force feedback that I get from something like iRacing or Assetto Corsa Composizione, for example. So it's certainly not on that level. And we'll obviously explore that in a lot more detail when we get into our full review further on down the track. But we already did a 111.877 on the very first attempt, which is two seconds faster than we were with the hand controller immediately. And I've got a feeling we're just going to be a whole lot more consistent here in general. Whoops, a little bit of a late shift there. That's throwing me back a bit. Trail breaking in, back on the power out. Nice little twitch there in the steering. I did feel the back end trying to break away from me a bit. Oh, it's a sloppy lap. Probably going to be a mid 12, I'd say. Try to get a good exit here, open up the steering, use as much of the track as I can. Could have used a little bit more than that. <laughs> All right, it's going to be a mid 12. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you definitely get a lot more definition 
and sense of what's going on with the car through the wheel than you do with the controller, even though it was surprisingly good with the controller. Well, my first lap's gonna be my best one, look at this. <laughs> Overthinking it, I think. Oh, I tried to open it out too much. So I'm definitely being a lot smoother with my inputs and that's the reason probably why I'm you know, hitting walls and things like that because I'm carrying more speed through the mid corner and that creates more opportunity to make a mistake on the corner exit. Whereas with the hand controller, I was just kind of, you know, brake, accelerate, brake, accelerate and just kind of jumping all over the place to sort of try to keep some sort of balance in the car. A little bit of a nick there on the curb on the inside. That actually communicated really nicely through the steering and I felt a real nice jerk, quite realistic. Better. Still not as fast as my first lap though. Did not expect that. Little bit of a correction there. So I've got it, I'm still haven't, I still haven't posted a lap time as fast as I was with a controller. This is better. It's gonna be a high, maybe a 112 flat. We'll see. Yeah, 112.1, okay. So we've got two more laps to beat our time. Definitely more consistent but not necessarily faster, interesting. Come on. It's funny because it looks faster and it feels faster, but the, the lap time isn't as quick. So a lot of, lot of interesting things going on here. Come on. So we got to get it this lap. Here we go. 111.466 is the time to beat. Oh, it's better. <laughs> Keep it out of the wall, open the steering up. There we go, he's right on my tail. Not gonna downshift this time. Back on the power, listen to that turbo spool up. How are we doing? Is it gonna be faster? I don't know, 110, 111, oh, 432! <laughs> so we were 0 0.034 faster. So there you go, not a massive amount of margin in there. And that is a, I think that's probably pretty much as accurate a comparison as you're gonna get because, you know, familiar track, so there's no track familiarity at play here. I'm not overly familiar with the car either. First time I've driven it since probably Gran Turismo 1 about 20 years ago, so. 
all it was was purely just down to learning the handling of the car and just what I'm feeling through the wheel here. So we did a first lap was a 111.877, then a 112.6, 112.7, 112.1, 112 flat, and then our 111.432. So definitely, I, I, it, it's funny because I felt like I was driving a lot faster with the wheel. The inputs were a lot smoother. I wasn't kind of jumping all over the place. But then the lap times didn't really reflect that up until the last lap, so it's interesting. But lap times, lap times aside, the experience is way, way, way more immersive and way more involved with the wheel and pedals, obviously. And I think lap times aside as well, because you would, you would ultimately be as far, I mean, there's gonna be a ton of people that are way faster than I am with the wheel on a controller already. That's not really what we're comparing here. It's more about the overall experience. But yeah, you definitely feel a higher level of control with the wheel and pedals. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. It's definitely a more immersive experience. And I think if you're a driving purist and somebody that really wants to extract the most out of Gran Turismo 7, then yeah, you are absolutely gonna wanna have a wheel and pedals. If you can afford something like a DD Pro, great. The experience with the G29 and uh, G920 wheels like that, I'm sure is pretty good as well. But that's something that we can explore a little right later on. We do have a couple of Thrustmaster and uh, Logitech wheels that are PS compatible, so we can test that out for you guys too. But yeah, jumping from the, uh, the DualSense controller up to the DD Pro, definitely a better overall experience, although not necessarily all that much faster. So interesting comparison there, but as I said before, we will be working on a full review of GT7. Really excited to bring that to you guys. We're really taking our time with it, making sure we really delve into all the various different facets of the game. But hopefully you found today's video interesting. If you have, leave a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel too. I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people that are brand new to the channel, being a brand new genre that we're exploring here with GT7. So welcome if it is your first time. Thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.